Hello, my name is Trent, and this is Practice Makes Better Music, a site and channel dedicated to effective practice techniques for guitarists. Today, I'm going to be building on a concept that I've been talking about for a few lessons now, and today's lesson really gets at the heart of this idea, and that is using triad shapes in position to follow progressions, whether you're using that for soloing or rhythm playing. Knowing the close in position triad shapes and being able to use them as guides in your playing is incredibly functional for whatever kind of music you might be playing. Today's exercises are going to get at uh, the same progression in three different positions because there's three different ways you can do this um, using one string set, the first three strings in this case, and then using each position of the triad, the major triad, each of the three positions to play a chord progression. So today's chord progression is a very simple one, but this can be applied to much more complex progressions as well. I'm gonna briefly describe each of the three exercises starting with the chord shapes in each position. So the first shape is the one that I've been talking about in the previous videos, which is second inversion F on the first three strings. All of these chord shapes are on the first three strings. So we're going from F, and the sixth chord in the key of F is D minor. So we're gonna to go to a D minor by raising the C note on the third string, up a whole step to D. And now this is a D minor uh, triad in root position. Next, I'm gonna to go to the four chord, which in order to do that, I just need to move my A up to a B flat for my D minor chord. Now I've got a first inversion B flat chord. Then I'm going to lower my B flat down to a G, which is the five of C chord, which is C is the five chord in the key of F. So I'm going here, G, E, and C, root position C chord in this position. So I'm going from F in second inversion to D minor in root position, to B flat in first inversion, to C in root position, back to F in second inversion. And that's my in position one, six, four, five progression based off of this second inversion F chord. Next, I'm gonna go from F here in second inversion up to the root position voicing of F. Now each of the chords is gonna be in a different inversion. So we have the root position F chord. My C goes up to a D to make this a D minor chord, the sixth chord. Next, my A goes up to a B flat to make a B flat chord in second inversion. And then I go down to a first inversion C chord. I've got E on the bottom, G, C. So I have F in root position, then D minor in first inversion, B flat in second inversion, and then C in first inversion. And that's my next position of this chord progression. The third and final position is going to be starting on a first inversion F chord up here at the 13th fret. So I'm gonna go from here to a D minor chord by raising the C again to a D. Then I'm gonna raise my A to a B flat to make the root position B flat chord. And then I'm going to lower my notes here to the second inversion C chord. So it's F, first inversion, to D minor, second inversion, B flat, root position, and C, second inversion. So that's the third and final position. Each of the exercises is going to be a scalar and arpeggio mixed pattern in each of these positions. So exercise one stays in the first position that we did. Exercise two, the second position, and exercise three, the third position. So there is a scalar pattern that com connects all these chords together in a position. So I'm gonna go through those briefly now. The workout for today's lesson is in three, four to change up the timing from what I've been doing. And it's in 16th notes with no rests. So it's just a steady stream of 16th notes. So exercise one begins on a descending F major arpeggio and second inversion. And then it goes up to the, the two of the scale, which is G, F, and then it goes up to the scale. So in time, it sounds like this. It 
that's 1 e and a, 2 e and a, 3 e and a. So the first measure over F sounds like this. And the same contour of that scale line is going to continue with each chord being modified slightly for the new chord. So D minor. Coming up to the flat seven of D minor or the five of F. Then B flat. Going down the B flat first inversion triad. Now I'm going to shift back a position to play the C chord. And I'm going to change my fingering on this root position shape once I do the scale pattern. Because, and that's going to happen in each root position shape along the way. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. It goes like this. When I switch here, I'm moving my first finger to the fifth fret to bar the fifth fret on the second and then third string to go back up the scale. So now I, I started in this position here with my first finger at the third fret. Then here, when I go to this note, the four of the C chord, I'm going to bar my first finger at the fifth fret to move to the next position up so that I come back to the position of the F in second inversion. Here's the whole thing all together, exercise one, three, four. Moving on to exercise two, this is going to be, like I said, in the next position up. So we're starting from root position F, going to first inversion D minor, second inversion B flat, and first inversion C. And it's going to maintain the same type of a scale contour that we did in the last exercise, beginning by descending an F major arpeggio in root position. And notice how this is the root position shape again, and I'm doing that same shift that I did on C down here. I'm going down the scale, down the arpeggio, the four, then here on the three of the scale, uh, or the tenth fret here, I'm barring my first finger to go from the second string to the third string, and then to continue up this scale shape. And then here, I'm coming to the E, the seven of the F scale, and I'm going down the D minor, which is a first inversion, all barred with one finger. Doing the exact same scale pattern, just beginning it with a different arpeggio so you can hear the context of that different chord. Then here I'm going to a B flat, down a B flat and second inversion. Then here I'm gonna shift back again for the C in first inversion. And then I'm back into my position for F in root position. Here's the entirety of exercise two, three, four. Each of the exercises has a repeat on it in the practice along workout, so you'll do it twice in a row and then you'll need to jump up to the next position fairly quickly. Position three here is an F in first inversion. So the third of F is A and it's the lowest note here. So I'm gonna descend the A, the F in first inversion. And here I'm gonna to go to the D minor. And that's a little bit of a weird reach there. If you go down to the D minor chord, and then you go to the E there, it's a bit of a reach. I'm reaching with my pinky here, so I can be still be in good position for the rest of the scale. And then I'm here, I'm gonna go down the B flat arpeggio, and it's kind of the same reach here. And then I'm going to go to the C in second inversion. and skip up to the G, 
two come back to the F on beat one. D minor. B flat. C. Like I said, this tool is incredibly powerful for when you're playing over chord progressions, no matter whether they're complicated chord progressions that skip between keys or just a chord progression that stays in one key. There's all sorts of ways you can use these ideas. And you can use this for rhythm playing. If I'm playing over the same progression, I can use the scale notes that I know around the chord to play embellishments on the chord like this. D minor. B flat, C. So that's a little more interesting than just playing, you know, strumming a chord, which sometimes you need to strum a chord, but it's it's nice to be able to embellish a little bit. And that also clearly works in all the other positions. And of course, the next one too. If you're enjoying this lesson, please don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe on YouTube, you can like my Facebook page, and I have a free course that I'm giving out at my site, practicemakesbettermusic.com, which is a dive into pentatonic patterns and how you can increase your soloing chops by getting better at the transitions between them. So you can check that course out at practicemakesbettermusic.com, and the practice workout is coming now. So enjoy.